check, check, check. Everybody ready to make a painting today. Did you think you would ever get here? Oh. Welcome, everybody, to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we're going to be making a painting by one of my favorite artists, one of the most beloved artists of all time, Bob Ross. I'm super excited for today's class. It's the very, very end of 2020, and it's been one crazy year. And if you're any like myself, you're certainly looking forward to um, 2021 and uh, hopefully a very, very different year. Uh, it's been really fantastic being able to do these classes and be able to see you guys twice a week and to be painting with you. So let's get right to it. Okay. Today's going to be a little bit of a fun episode. Bob Ross was, you know, I think actually a pretty fun guy and certainly brought a lot of joy and pleasure to people around the world. So I want to try to really embrace that kind of uh, energy that he brought to his art. As you can see, this is my wife's uh, crazy wig, so... I don't know, it's starting to itch on my head, so we'll see how long I can deal with a crazy wig here. But let's get right into it, and we're going to talk about Bob Ross's life and his technique. And I'm just going to say right off the top, I'm not going to paint as fast as Bob Ross, and I'm not painting an oil paint. We're going to be painting an acrylic paint, which is very, very different, especially with the way that Bob Ross painted. So we're going to be using a very different kind of approach to making today's painting. So if you're looking... At this episode to find out how Bob Ross did his paintings. You're not going to find that here, although I'm going to do a little analysis of his technique. But of course, you can watch the actual episode that Bob Ross filmed painting today's episode. I put a link in the video description below so you can watch that because he shows you exactly how he does it. So there's, there's no need for me to interpret his, his technique or, or look at the paintings to figure out how it's done. He's made it all available to you there on the web, right? Um, so let's jump right in. I'm going to show a few things right off the top. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> here's here's a little meme a li list of memes here of which are you know kind of funny ways that people reinterpret uh, his um, Bob and his art. And I just thought this was kind of really funny right off the top. There's no mistakes, just happy accidents, right? And that's something I firmly believe in myself. If you look in the video description below, there's also the very first thing, a link to a folder, which has inside of it a, it has a few different things, including this image, and then a tracing of that image, which you can print out and you can transfer this onto your canvas. Now, again, right off the top, that's not how Bob made his paintings at all, right? But um, I have been doing, making a, an outline like this for each of the paintings we've done so far. And the feedback from you guys has been that it's been really helpful having something like this, which you can transfer onto the canvas. So um, I'm also not going to use this technique um, I've demonstrated this a number of times in previous episodes. The Warhol episode, which is I think, you know, a, a month and a half ago, I went into pretty in depth on how to do that. So I'm not going to do it today because it's for me doesn't really. I, I don't think Bob Ross's style of painting really requires it. But again, if you want to make one that is really really accurate in terms of composition, you can use this uh, technique to transfer that image onto your canvas. So, a number. I'll also say here, Bob Ross made three copies of this painting. 
So here's the first version of this, and he would call this the Kowalski version, or he'd sign it Kowalski on the back, and we'll, we'll talk about who that is in, in a bit here. But here's the first version of this painting that he painted. This is the version that he painted on television. It looks a little bit more green than I think it originally was, but uh, um, that's the image that I found on the web of this. So this is the one, if you watch the episode, this is the actual final result that he painted. And then he also made a, a third version that he would sign on the back book because he would take these paintings and produce books and postcards and all sorts of things. And so he would, right after filming the episode, after making this painting, he would make a third version of the painting and he would probably spend a little bit more time on it. He was maybe a little bit more careful. You could see maybe some of the reflections and particularly some of these trees, you know, in the foreground were just a, a little bit more carefully done as opposed to this one, which he was just, you know, getting out as quickly as possible. And I think the first one he did was the one that he would use to, to kind of help figure out exactly what he wanted to do. And, um, and he'd have often have this painting in the background or next to the canvas he was working on during the show. So I think it's kind of nice to th see the three different versions he did side by side so that you can also see that there's lots of room for interpretation in this painting. One of the reasons why I chose this painting is it's a really bright, happy painting. And boy, oh boy, do we want 2021 to be a bright year, right? So it's on a clear day, you know, when all the dark clouds have passed and we're moving into a, a whole new happy atmosphere. Um, but it's also, I think, just a very brightly colored painting. And it's an opportunity for you if you want to invert the colors, do something really wild and have fun with me today, then you have my permission and you certainly have Bob Ross's permission because he would be the last person who would discourage you from pursuing your uh, imagination and the instincts that might come up as you make a painting. Okay. <laughs> So let's jump right into it. Let's get our materials and our canvas out and we're going to start transferring this image um, onto the canvas. Okay. Um, I should also say, maybe even before I, I jump into this, a few different things, a few tools of Bob Ross's um, kit that he used a lot. One of which would be a brush like this, a fan brush. Now, I'm probably not going to use it. Do I have, I have, here's one that's gotten a lot of use. Um, but he used a fan brush for making most of those trees. And especially in this episode, you see him doing that. I can kind of demonstrate a little bit how that's done. But again, Bob Ross demonstrated it 403 times how to do it. So whether it's really useful for me to demonstrate his technique again and again and again is probably not necessary. Maybe I also just brought out all these other paint brushes because these are, um, they're big paint brushes. He was making paintings on larger canvases. So he's got to fill up that space pretty quickly. So these are some large brushes that I've used for making really big paintings and murals. And then he also used kind of these brushes uh, these these kind of round. Uh, to be honest, I'm trying to remember what the name of this type style of brush is. It's not a round brush, um, but uh, but he would use these for blending, and he actually had some pretty big, wide ones that he would use for doing his blending. So he's using a bunch of different tools that we're not going to use today. Again, we're gonna we're gonna try to make his painting. Um, using some of the techniques that we've done in class. And another thing that he really used a lot was a palette knife, right? A mixing knife. Now, I'll show you what a palette knife is for as we get going here. You can see there's lots of different kinds. Um, some of these, I think I bought these ones in a set. And they're, some of them are really stiff and some of them um, are much more flexible. And so depending on what you want, you can get one that doesn't bend much and one that bends very easily. And then here's a huge one. I, I did use this a lot when 
I paint in oil paints. So we'll also talk about the difference between oil and acrylics. And this is also, this is, if you wanted to get as close as possible to painting in oil paint, or if you wanted to get as close as possible to painting with acrylic paint, no, I'm gonna say it. If you wanted to paint with acrylics in a very similar uh, approach to oil paints, you would get something like this. A, um, probably, not the the most uh, politically correct title for a, 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 a art material these days, but a so-called retarder. And the idea is that it slows down or retards the, the the paint curing process so that the paint will stay quote unquote open for longer or um, uh, paintable. So you could paint something you you put, um, you know, like five or six drops of this into a, a palette like we would have. And then that paint could take, you know, two or three days to dry, right? So as opposed to drawing in 30 seconds, this could take a few days to dry. And that's how he painted as well. So let's get our materials out. We're gonna start putting some paint right onto the canvas. Or actually, you know what? Maybe we'll we'll transfer our image first so we don't, our paint doesn't dry too fast. So we've got our paints, we've got our paint brushes, right? These are just paint brushes we bought from an uh, art supply store in a pack of, uh, there's two packs of 10 that, that are there. Another thing that I've mentioned many times before, but if this is your first time joining us, then welcome, is using some gesso. So I put some gesso onto a canvas so I bought these cheap canvases from the dollars. Well, I did buy them originally. The first, what, 30 episodes were made on canvases I bought from the dollar store. And then as we're getting closer to no longer being beginner artists and moving into an intermediary position, right? I kind of upgraded here with just a slightly more expensive. So instead of a dollar canvas, it's a $2 canvas. And then I applied the gesso onto the canvas with a brush and let it dry, uh, ideally for about an hour. But these have been dried for a few weeks now. And get a couple of rags out here, ready to paint on. Okay. So after you've gessoed your canvas, put a little bit of that, uh, that it, it looks like white paint, but it isn't exactly. Okay, so I just give it a quick sand with 220 grit sandpaper. That's, it's, 220 is pretty similar to what you would have on a, on your nail file, right? So it's it's not like a really super thick grit, like a 100 or whatever. It's um, we're not trying to to like you know scrape all of the paint off. We're trying to get those little peaks and sand it down so that this is as smooth a surface as possible. And the way Bob Ross is painting, he's painting relatively quickly, so he wants a fairly smooth surface. And he's also painting. Um, well, for all intents and purposes, he's painting very thin layers of paint. So, um, if you're painting really, really thick, you know, you've got lots of paint on your paintbrush, having a, a textured canvas would actually maybe work better because it's going to help all of that paint adhere to the surface, right? Okay, so let's draw that image onto the canvas. Let's grab a pencil. If you're transferring your image, that's that works as well. Let's uh, okay. I got all these shadows on the painting. Let's just move some of these off to the side. Oh, and now I got sh different shadows. <laughs> okay. So I always like to divide my this my big uh, hair is gonna. <laughs> is in the way a little bit. So let's divide this into quarters. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? 
around halfway in the middle of this painting right here you can see on the left and your cursor is right around there all right so um maybe a little bit further down around here is where the reflection or the, the kind of the, the far shore of this um, picture would be and then if we kind of go up here this might be the lower peak of this mountain right so let's say we have a mountain going here mountain going here all right these peaks So, however, wherever you want to put those, here's going to be the sun that's blazing through the sky. I'm not even going to bother drawing the cloud. I mean, the clouds are somewhere around here, right? Um, these trees, you can put as many of them in there as you want. I'm not really going to bother illustrating them too much. And then we have, let's say if this is that far shore, right? And we've got some other trees here and a reflection, right? Here down here is the set of bushes and more bushes. And he's got where all these trees are going into here and into there. Right, so you see, I'm just doing a very simple outline on here. It doesn't have to be too complicated because we're going to cover everything with paint anyway. So, um, again, I know that, so if you did this transfer, you'd have a lot more detail. But I wouldn't, if I was, even if I was transferring this, I wouldn't really go into all these little dots and lines on here, all that stuff. Unless you find that helpful. Okay, so let's get some paint out onto our palette here. Okay. A lot of people like my new haircut. Well, um, I'm not sure how long I'll be able to sustain this new haircut. What's funny about Bob Ross is he, if you look at the earlier seasons, his hair wasn't that big. He had a perm, and then I think he wanted to get rid of it, but because they had started to incorporate his likeness into the logo and uh, the intro to the beginning of the show, his, the people that he was, you know, his family and the, the Kowalskis, who were this this couple who who went into business with him because they were so passionate about what he was doing, discouraged him from cutting his hair because it would sort of change, uh, you know, people would be ex were kind of expecting this particular look that he had. <laughs> so he was sort of trapped with this big hair that seemed to kind of get bigger and bigger as things went on. Okay, so we've got our paint on our palette. We're ready to go. We've got our sketch on here. Now, um, maybe, you know what I want to do is just do a quick little, I just want to look at his process here really quickly and kind of talk about, uh, well, I didn't even talk about his, uh, so here's just a quick summary on his biography here. Bob Ross, born in 1942, died in 1995. So he's been gone for like 25 years now, right? So, and yet 
he's probably more visible, more present than he's ever been. So, you know, he, you, I, I mean, I got some Christmas presents with Bob Ross for Christmas, a mug and some candies. I've got a puzzle I got for Christmas from last year. Uh, he, his videos are all over YouTube and they've got millions of views. My wife and I, when we were in Hawaii a few years ago, we, were, we went to some pub, a restaurant to have lunch, and it was like a, some sports bar, and they had a hockey game on, and this is Hawaii, a hockey game on one screen, and Bob Ross painting on another screen. I was just like, this is crazy, right? How just visible he is. Anyway, you know, 1995, he passed away from, um, I think, Hodgkin's lymphoma, which he kept secret all the way up until the very, very end. Um, he didn't, uh, although if you see some of the very, very final episodes, you could see him getting thinner and thinner. He uh, was born in Florida at the age of 18, joined the Air Force, the American Air Force. And I think it's, uh, I'm not sure exactly when he was stationed up in Alaska, but very soon after that, he went, he went up to Alaska, he spent you know, the next, I think, 10 years of his life in Alaska. And while he was there, there was some painting classes. And my own experience with the Canadian military is that there are, that they do as much as possible to kind of keep people busy because, um, thank goodness war isn't happening all the time. Although at this time, the Vietnam War was going on and there is a little bit of a, a myth that he fought in the Vietnam War. He wasn't a Vietnam veteran that saw all this combat, and that's why he got into painting, um, which is one of the most common myths I've heard about him. Is that that's why he speaks so softly because of all of the action, the, the violent action that he saw. He was somebody that was involved in training other soldiers, and I think it says somewhere in here that he. Oh yeah, so he was the guy that would yell at people to, you know, get, make your bed. If you've ever seen Stanley Kubrick film Full Metal Jacket, and that guy who's yelling and yelling at people, I think that was what his role was. So, you know, he's decided after he finished that he would no longer raise his voice after he left the military. Um, he So he learned how to paint, and, and he also watched this television show by another artist, Bill Alexander, and um, who who basically taught him how this, this particular method of painting called Alla Prima, which has been around for 500 years, and it's a particular kind of painting style we're not going to really use here, but um, in, a, in some way painting with acrylics is as close as you can get to that alla prima style without using oil paints. We'll get into that. Um, what other kind of quick things can I say about him? Um, do I, anything else I want to mention here? There is a, a really great documentary. I think it's called the Bob Ross, the happy painter. And you can find that. I think it was produced by the Bob Ross company. But, you know, he also made all these appearances, you know, with Regis and Kathy Lee on the Phil Donahue show on MTV. So, you know, he he was a very public persona way back in the 80s and early 90s before he passed away. Um, and then, of course, you, know, you see lots of people dressing up as Bob Ross for Halloween, which goes to show, you know, if you can dress up as a cultural figure like Bob Ross or Picasso you could see how you would you transcend just the art world into the greater um, popular culture okay so let's take a quick look here you know when you google Bob Ross <laughs> the first thing you see are images of his all of these have his image of his face in here which is very unusual most ar artists you type in their name the first thing you see is their artwork, and then you got to kind of dig around to see a picture of what they actually looked like. Not Bob Ross, right? Um, in fact, I'd be hard pressed to find, even when I was thinking about Bob Ross for the show, like what is his most famous painting that we could make an image of? And there isn't really one painting that that is the most famous. Um, by the way, there's this. I think this is 
there's a few articles on where all the Bob Ross paintings are these days. And there was just a recent exhibition, which I didn't see, that, that was touring through actually quite small museums across North America. And, um, but again, anyway, really quickly, looking at these paintings, and there was um, a 538 article recently that talked about like all the common themes, something like 90% of, 91% of all the paintings he's made feature trees, at least one tree. I think 60% of them have at least one mountain in them, you know, and so on and so forth. So there, there's a lot of, re re there is a lot of repeating themes and elements in his work. And, you know, which is actually something I would really encourage, especially beginner artists, um, or really any artist, but, but if you're beginning is to is to explore the same theme over and over and over again. So making a painting at, uh, you know, of, of the same scene in winter, in fall, in spring, in summer, in daytime, in nighttime, uh, with, you know, different types of weather, you know, whether it's snowing or raining or the sun is bright, the sun is setting, the sun is rising. And so I could go on and on and on, but exploring um, uh, the same scene, the same composition many, many times, I think would be really, really helpful. Because then you're not sort of worried about how to do the sketch, the drawing. You're just worrying about the color and applying different types of color, mixing different colors. Um, probably the most famous person of all, let me just take a quick tangent, is uh, Claude Monet, who's going to be our next artist next week. We're going to make a Claude Monet painting. Um, but Claude Monet is very famous for painting the same paintings, or the same scene over and over again. So you see here on the right, this here, and I'm sure he made more than just what we see here, but he would paint like the haystacks. He painted, uh, what's the name of that church? Is it Rouen Cathedral? I can't remember. Um, yeah, it is Rouen Cathedral, right? So here's another kind of similar kind of thing here. Him, or here's even more of them. You can see Monet went out and painted the very same thing over and over and over again in different types of light. And that really, I think, was a pivotal moment in his career and I, so again I cannot stress how important that would be if you really really want to grow as a painter doing an exercise like that for maybe a month you just make the same painting four different times right that would be hugely helpful okay so let's just take a quick look here's Bob this is the actual video of Bob Ross painting and I'll just kind of go back I'm not gonna play it because otherwise this video will be taken down um, but uh, he, he began every single painting with, like he would, he's painting an oil paint, obviously, but he would go and, and cover this with a fairly heavy coat of white paint. And that allowed, that, that's part of the alla prima technique is you have this literally, which is wet on wet painting. So you have a canvas that is with wet oil paint on it. It doesn't have to be white, but most often is white. And then you're painting kind of light, lightly on top of it with um, other paint and it sticks really well to it and you can do lots of blending very, very easily. So you can see he starts here with this pink dot in the center and then builds outwards, right? He's applying all of this color and you can see he he's already has got the color in the top and then in the bottom down here. Right, so he's got these, he's mirroring these colors. Let's see. And he, he's also blending everything in. So he's putting a color down and then quickly blending it with the surrounding colors. And then you can see here, he's now putting in the, he's working completely from the background towards the foreground. So he, he gets that, the sun down and then he starts putting in the clouds 
and then he starts putting in these mountains and the mountains are done entirely with a palette knife uh, do i have one that shape right so here's he's using a palette knife to do a lot of this um, and then so he gets that in blends it out and then uses another white to go over top of it and he gets that um, kind of grainy rocky texture really quickly so that's also a secret for how he's painting is that he uses these little tricks to to simulate the look of a number of different types of things like trees and rocks and water very quickly uh, here he is putting in some shadows and he's using contrasting colors right the complementary colors so he's got blue and red right or purple and yellow and so that's also a, a, one of the ways he helps create a lot of contrast and depth in his work here he's putting in the far shore and then he also uses a palette knife to quickly put in like uh, dividing lines where the uh, the water meets the 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 trees or the shore so he uses that quite a lot <clears throat> um, maybe I'll just sort of We'll look at how he does a tree again really quickly here so he often kind of makes a quick straight line and then he goes in here and then using his fan brush quickly you know within 10 seconds he's got a tree up there and then in the foreground he's using one of these big wide brushes to really quickly almost like a stamp quickly put in all these brushes and then he comes he puts the, the trunks of the trees and then puts highlights over top of it all right um, oh I think this is the documentary about him where's I just want to show this Bill Alexander so this is this other guy Bill Alexander that uh, was a German artist that had a television show that is a lot like Bob Ross's that happened before and actually Bob Ross um, started working for him and became a traveling salesman selling um, Bill Alexander's art materials around and would do demonstrations of Bill Alexander's technique and because he was getting so good at it and then when he met um, the uh, Kowalskis they they encouraged him to kind of go off on on Bob Ross's own and do his own thing rather than kind of working for this other guy so anyway that's this documentary Bob Ross the happy painter is is recommended so let's dive right into the painting um, or just really quickly here here's the Facebook group that uh, the private Facebook group Wow look at all look at these cool paintings um, so people are, are, are uploading, joining the group and uploading the paintings that they made based on today's class. And also, as you can see, other paintings that were inspired by, um, uh, based on their, their own interests. So here's Jean's paintings. Cool. I haven't even taken it, seen any of these yet. Very cool. And then lastly, I've mentioned this a few times, I th and I'm not getting any m sponsorship from anybody for anything, but I just, I just think this is a really great book. It's super thin. You could read it in you know, an afternoon, but it's about this author that detests you know, uh, Celine Dion and her music and goes on this journey to understand uh, her impact and why people like her music so much. And by the end of it, becomes a pretty big fan of Celine Dion. And that was certainly one of the things I've thought about for a number of the artists that I've chosen are artists that, you know, are maybe a little bit outside of the, of the what we would call like the canon of art, are not people that are really accepted or shown at, at museums and kind of leaning into that a little bit and trying to figure out what it is about them that makes them so special. So let's dive right into this. Okay, so um, I don't know how long I can keep this funny hat on for. Okay, let's see. 
let's, uh, what's the first thing that we want to do here? So, as we just saw, Bob Ross, let's bring up this version here. As we saw Bob Ross, what he did is he started painting this, the sky and the sun first, and then worked his way out, right? I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a different approach. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to paint this top half with a cool yellow, and then I'm going to blend it into a warm yellow at the bottom here. And I'm not going to, I'm going to use all of the same paint brushes I've been using throughout the entire course. So, um, uh, you don't have to worry about not having the right brush where I must be. Hmm. Okay. I know I had another one of these for this class. Hmm. I'm not sure where it went. Am I going to do it all with this one brush? I think so. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to start off with here is some cool yellow. Taking a little bit of white in here. Because one of the things he adds, Bob Ross uses a lot of white in his picture, in his color, uh, especially at the beginning. He's using a lot of white in order to push things backwards. And then as he goes, he's adding less and less white. And at the very, very end, he's got um, like much darker colors on there. Let me see. Which yeah, okay. So, and then I'm going to take a little bit of water. I'm just going to dip my brush. In here. Because I'm going to make a wash, right? So I want this to be kind of thin. Okay. So I'm going to paint this all the way across here. So I'm painting this cool yellow in the background. All right, so it's going to help all those colors go backwards. Just blend that out. Okay, and then I'm going to take some warm yellow. With some water here. You notice I didn't wash my brush. Okay. I'm just going to put this... down here. I'm just going to quickly go around these edges. I mentioned a few times before I like, I don't really want the white of the canvas showing there. I want kind of a little edge Okay, very quickly, uh, we've got that done. Now, I still have all of these lines showing through. Ideally, you know, Bob Ross didn't do any drawing to start. He just went right in with the paint. If I wanted to kind of obliterate them a little bit, I would kind of wait, and then we can do a we can start building on this in a, using a slightly different technique. Now, if it's still wet like this, I could. Let's get a smaller brush, go, and I'm going to take a little bit of this cool red, and just get a little bit of white on there, and put it right in here. Now this is if it's, if it's wet. Okay, and then let's get another brush. Okay, and this is a dry brush. I haven't used it for anything else. And I can take it and then just be very delicate about trying to blend it outward. See, 
see I'm kind of slowly expanding. All right, and then I'm just going to take my cloth and I'm just going to rub all that paint off. And then I'm just going to go around the outer edges. And soften that up even more. So you can keep on doing this until you get as soft of a look as possible. And then if you want, you can go back in and darken it again. Again, it's always, you want this to be nice and dry. Now I'm not going to use this technique for the entire painting. I just want to show if you're going to if you want to paint quickly like Bob Ross does, this would with acrylic paint. This would be the way to do it, right? So you can see me wiping paint off. Cuz I don't want to take this paint and spread it out all over the place. Okay. So that would that's how if you wanted you could blend paint in that way. I'm going to make this bottom down here even a little bit warmer, so I'm just going to take my paint and go back in here and let's just warm up the bottom even more. If you had to do a kind of a sharp edge, you found it really hard to do the blending, then you could just have on this top here the cool yellow and on the bottom the warmer yellow, kind of like right along here where the shore is, right? Okay. I'm going to do more work up here in the sky as you'll see as we go, but I just want to kind of demonstrate a little bit of that technique. Oh yeah, my, my, uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to take my, this off here because <laughs> my hair keeps getting in the way of the uh, painting itself. And then you're just going to have a, um, a class of a close up of hair. <laughs> okay. I love all the comments. So. What can we do next here? Now, the painting is still a little bit wet, which, depending on how you want to work, can be a positive or a negative, right? If you're painting like Bob Ross, you want to really try to go for that look, then a, really, then a painting that is wet like this works really, really well. If, however, you're, you want um, uh, to kind of be a little bit more careful about how you're painting then you want your canvas to be to dry a little bit faster so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a little bit slower technique so I'm not going to worry about trying to paint really 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 fast instead I'm going to let this dry off a bit here and if anything you know um I'm just thinking about these lines. If I wanted to cover up those lines, right now might not be too bad of an opportunity to do a little bit of that. I'm just gonna get a little bit of white into this paint. And paint this in a bit. The more white I have, the white, as I've mentioned many times before, is a great cover up. that in here. I'm not super concerned about that, but if that was a problem for you, then we could do just like this. 
and I'll be doing other layers of paint over top of it anyway, but I don't mind that, uh, that yellow actually, or the white being in the sky. Okay, so maybe while this is still drying, ideally I would let it dry a little bit, but uh, I think we're going to start painting in these mountains. Let's take a look at, at that here. So one of the things that Bob Ross does, or he and he's, he mentioned actually in this video that it doesn't matter if you do the, the light colors or the shadows first, or the highlights or the shadows first. There's no right or wrong way to do that. I'm going to suggest that we do some of the darker shadows and then we do some of the lighter shadows afterwards. So just maybe that's how I would paint. Um, but he does get like a this kind of purple down first. So let's mix a little bit of that purple. So I'm going to wash this brush off. I've got a bunch of brushes and a little bit of cleaning. So that's a good way of slowing the process down, giving things a little bit of time to dry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately I had to take that that uh, my, my Bob Ross hair off, otherwise I'd, be, I'd spend the, the first few weeks of the new year itching my head. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to paint in now, he has like an under layer of a purple that he put down first, so I think that's actually a great idea. So I'm going to mix, let's go to this here. So I've taken my warm blue and my cool red, and mix these together. bit more of a blue until we get kind of this purple here. And then I'm going to take some white, put that in there. We'll, we want it to be dark, but maybe not too dark, right? Because it's going to be in the background. I'm going to take a little bit of water, not too much. I just dipped it into the water really quickly just because this is going to be uh, kind of a wash. And even though a lot of this isn't dry, I'm just going to now attack the canvas with this. So this is kind of the, the mountains that he put in here. And if I soak up a little bit of the yellow, it doesn't matter because pretty much all of this is going to get covered by paint. So I had a, a cool red and then a, a warm blue in this mixture. And I'm painting over top of a cool yellow. So that's really going to help push this kind of a little bit further back. So even though there's this purple is kind of a neutral because it's painted on this cool yellow, it's just not going to be cool quite as it won't it will still kind of reside in the background okay, okay. and then I'm just going to take it down here and then I'm just going to kind of blend it out a little bit actually how far down does he go I'm just going to get a little water in my brush here. I'm just going to take that because that, the water is going to help activate the paint a little bit so I can blend it a little bit. Oh, that yellow in there. I think I'm going to keep that like that. If anything, I'm going to come back here. kind of erasing some of that out of the, the shoreline. We'll put a bit of cool yellow back in here. These 
these cheap brushes. Sometimes you get these little flakes of hair that start kind of falling off, so that's all right. I should, I should not be scrubbing in there because you see how I'm scrubbing some paint off, so that's just telling me this painting needs a little bit of extra time to dry. Okay. So, I should have brought my hair dryer down here. Hmm. In fact, I wonder if my wife is upstairs. Maybe, you know what, I'm going to run and get the hair dryer really quickly. And let's leave... this up on the screen for one second. So I'm just going to Okay, that kind of speeds things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, uh, ideally I would have done all the, what I'm about to do before I put these mountains on here, but this is going to be hidden anyway. So I'm, I'm going to add a little bit more color around here. So let's see, what color could we put in? Um, I think I want to get rid of this this uh, these lines a little more. So let's get some more yellow out. And then I, I like that kind of the greenish pink quality or the, the greenish blue and this pink. They're kind of wild colors. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of that back into this painting as well. So I'm just going to touch up this area here where I had some of those lines. Go for the bright look. Okay. funny like again the first bunch of episodes when I had lines like that I could have cared less and then as I've been progressing I'm like you know what I kind of want to be a little bit more careful 
Okay, so um, let's let, I'm gonna make this uh, pink in here. I'm gonna fix that. Before I go any further, let's just. So I'm gonna take some pink and let's put this really bright pink right here. That might be a little. A little bit too pink, but you know what? Let's we're gonna have fun with today's episode. So, there's another brush. I'm looking for a dry brush, and I'm just gonna take do that same technique we did earlier. Just spread some of this paint around. I gotta get my cloth just to so this is the kind of maybe the the dry brush version of how we would do all of this here, which is how I'm going to do a lot of today's painting. It's like Bob Ross with a dry brush technique. So I'm not going to be able to get quite as smooth of a transition dip a little bit of water in here on my brush to clean up some things here oops and spread it out a bit <laughs> okay You can keep on kind of adding color back into the center. happy with that okay now I'm gonna do a little bit of color around these edges here getting some I'm gonna go for a bit of blue here take a bit of blue let's put this in here oh yeah Get a little bit of water on there. Where's this? 
stubborn hair coming from? So it looks kind of messy right now. We're going to make it all work. Have no fear. So just the scrubbing into the surface here. Rubbing it off. Crazy blue. Okay, so I should have used the blow dryer right there because you can see how it's not adhering very well. So you can only really do this a few times before the paint starts to get angry with you. So I got all this dry paint on top of one another. So let's So you can see I mean, there was a little bit of paint kind of got sp splotched in there. But I can fix that again later. Or I could put a, a moon or something orbiting up there. Could be a spaceship if you wanted. Okay. 
So, you know, there's a little goof there. I'm gonna go back and fix it. I, I know Bob Ross finished his painting by now. <laughs> um, but again, he's using a different material to do this. And I'm also not in a hurry. One of the things I was thinking about while I was watching some of those is like, man, there's a level of like, he's famous for being, you know, very chill, but there's a level of urgency in those paintings that is pretty intense. Like he's trying to get these paintings done within a very short period of time. Okay, so I'm just gonna fix this, maybe blend it back out a little bit, and this little area here that I'm not happy with. So. I'm just taking some yellow paint a little bit of white on it, and, oops, it's quite a lot. I'm blending it back out into here. So kind of what I'm showing right now is it take this is the the long way of doing things but it's also the way that is maybe the 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 safest way in in some way because there's not that same urgency to kind of get it all done as quickly as possible we can kind of take our time, adding little bits of color, blending it slowly like this. Obviously, it really helps to have a hair dryer to help you. Just got a little bit of paint on the brush and kind of go outwards. It's almost imperceptible kind of what I'm doing here. I don't even know if, <laughs> if much of what I'm doing is showing up on camera or not, but keep on going endlessly on this to get this nice and smooth and then I think I'm gonna do the opposite and just darken this up here the edges on this side fix this uh, sun there I 
I don't, you know, it's a little frustrating that things kind of, I, I think it's because I changed my mind very soon in here and went and got the hair dryer. It obviously, um, it's taken me longer to kind of get this done than I had hoped. But I also, I, I want people to kind of see how you recover from some kind of, uh, you know, unexpected occurrence or Bob Ross, you know, says a happy accidents. You know, it's, there's, there's no kind of cataclysmic, you know, um, nothing in painting can go totally, totally wrong. There's always a way if you just kind of take a deep breath. You might have to do a little bit of extra work to kind of bring it back to a place that you're, you are happy with, but all problems can be solved. That little area there is just being tricky. It doesn't want to absorb the paint. It'd still be a little wet, but anyway, I think <laughs> I could continue fussing and stuff with this here, but I'm gonna move forward. Part of me wants to um, try doing this painting again afterwards in like 30 minutes and seeing if I can pull it off. Um, so I just really want to get this nice blue on this edge here way darker than he did, obviously. And let's just get... Just to blend that out a bit. Okay. So if you wanted to integrate this even more and really smooth this out, what you could do is put a very thin wash of the 
of the cool yellow over top, and that would really help unify everything. I'm debating to myself right now whether I should do that just to show you how that would work, but I'm afraid some of this, even though I've just blow dried it, isn't quite dark enough. But, um, yeah, let's, maybe I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Um, and probably so many of you are, are done this and working on other parts of your painting. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of white in the center, which is what he did. The sun is like white hot. brushes. I'll probably buy the sink right now, I bet. Probably a few people watching right now saying, you know what, I'm just going to switch to oil paint. Um, when I first started painting, I painted with acrylic paints. And then I, then I did eventually move into oil paints. Which I, I prefer actually painting with oil paints. One of the things I like about oil paints is it's a lot more like chemistry. There's it's there's more of like a science behind it than I feel like there is for acrylic paints. Like some of this, what I don't like about acrylic paints is, is how quickly it dries. And it can be kind of frustrating because you can't, it's harder to do the blending that, that, uh, that Bob Ross is very famous for doing. And very, you know, you could see Thomas Kincaid also used a lot of the blending um, and there are like I said there are, there is if you really really want to get into to doing some blending you could use uh, that retarder to slow the drying of the paint okay now I think I think I, I will just so I can demonstrate this put a coat of of the uh, of cool yellow over top of this whole thing and that should kind of unify things I'm a little concerned that there's 
some of this hasn't totally cured yet, so we could get some crazy results and maybe I'll have to start over or something. But um, let's cross our fingers and see if we can get this to work here. Okay. So I'm just going to take my yellow here. And I have to do this without any scrubbing. I don't want to be doing this and going in and trying to clean it up and make it perfect. I kind of have one chance at this. Okay. So I've got this yellow on my brush and I'm thinning it down with some water. So I'm going to basically put like a wash over top of this. And what I'm doing, the reason why I'm not just painting yet is I'm trying to make this consistent. So I'm trying to get all the paint that's sort of stuck in the paintbrush. I'm trying to get it out and mixed in with all this water so that everything is one consistent layer of paint. Okay, so let's let's do this here. I don't really want to do any mixing. I'm just trying to get this paint out onto the canvas as quickly as possible. Got some big stripes on there. Um, I'm hesitant to do any to do anything else right in here just yet while the paint is still wet. So. Okay, and if I want to do a little bit more in a few few areas, I could touch that up. Ah, so you got to be careful. That was too much, too much in there. But okay, I think uh, Michael, you're just gonna move on from the sky. <laughs> So Jean says, for Christmas I got water-based oil paints. Can't wait to try them. I find it takes oil paints so long to dry and the smell of the cleaner is not great. I haven't used the water-soluble uh, oil paint before. It sounds really interesting. Um, and I haven't heard bad things about it. I it, it just... I would... Um, I have to. I would have to do some research to find out how that actually works. Like, 
one of the things that I love about oil paint is is the mixing of the different kinds of additives you could put in there to really have 100% control over the paint. You know, in a way, if I was to try to, I don't know if this comparison, but the first thing that comes to mind is like acrylic is like the Apple or Macintosh of the painting materials and oil paint is like your PC, um, Linux, like Windows kind of fully customizable kind of paint material. You could do a little bit of that with acrylic paint, but it, um, and there, it, obviously it's a chemical, so there is a, a kind of chemistry to it, but um, maybe I just haven't fully explored it all. I just feel like acrylic is much more limited in how it can be altered. There's just some, there's like six, seven hundred years of using oil paint and being able to modify it that there's so much literature and people who have experimented with it who've passed down their lessons. Anyway, I'm going to leave the sky alone. I'm going to put these mountains back in here that uh, that I, I took out. So here's, I'm going to mix the same color again. This is a bit of a detour, good like 45 minutes out of my way, but sometimes that happens. Sometimes while you're painting, things go in directions you weren't expecting, and you can fight it, or you can embrace it. I really think, like, one of the big lessons, like, I, f I feel like painting really teaches us, like, life lessons. I know it sounds kind of hokey, but Everything that I learn from painting, there's, I often will think to myself, like, oh, this is just like a painting, or like this, I have to kind of embrace the things that I, I was doing in my painting, that is like things that I can use in my life outside the studio. And, um, you know, that whole thing with like Bob Ross and the happy accidents, people think it's quite funny, but it, if you think about that just in your regular everyday life, it's pretty powerful. It's a, a kind of a zen kind of thing to it, of embracing the unexpected and the unknown and allowing for a chance to happen and trying to see the opportunity in those kind of a situations. Okay. So here's where we should have been like uh, I don't know, 45 minutes ago or wherever we were, right? A little bit darker than I was planning. But you know, this is why Bob Ross made three paintings. He made one beforehand to, to, to deal with the situation so he would know what, what to do. If it happened on camera, then he'd film it and do an even better job a second time around, and then do the third one afterwards for the books and the postcards, right? So even when you're using a hair dryer, just because it's dry to the touch doesn't mean it's still not completely dry. So, you know, it's a little, I still feel a little bit of tackiness and that's not actually going to be solved by just blasting it with more heat. Sometimes it's like actually taking the heat off because it can be almost kind of melting the paint a little bit, right? So you just got to let that dry. So, okay, let's uh, move into the next phase here. We're going to start putting some of the highlights and shadows on this mountain. So 
so this will be is kind of more similar to what we did with um, the Lauren Harris painting right and you can as you do this let's go to the where's it right here so as you put in these uh, the the shadows and the highlights on these different sides you can decide um, how uh, how rough or how clean you want to make some of those rocky areas right if you remember like the, the way Lauren Harris did is very smooth very um, stylized version of doing the mountains versus Bob Ross has he's using the palette knife where's the palette knife he would use so he's using a palette life knife like this to drag paint over here right and to get and he's sort of jittering his the palette knife to kind of get some texture um, you could try doing a little bit of that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, let's say he's got white there do we want a perfectly white side of this mountain I don't think so I don't think we want perfectly white could be a little bit intense so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white I'm gonna mix a gray let's just get a little bit more white on our palette just like Lauren Harris did here we take some white and black we can mix a gray and you could put any color you like into this gray um, you could put a little bit in fact let's put a little bit of this purple in here that we just mixed let's get a little more of that. okay now I'm gonna take a larger brush and I'm going to simulate a little bit of that palette knife technique, but with a brush. Another thing that he's... Maybe let's zoom in a bit here. Um, another thing that uh, he's doing is he leaves a little bit of this edge in places. Just so we aren't covering this entire thing up. So, in fact, let's go to this angle here I'm just barely holding this brush like it is kind of just dangling in my hand right so I'm gonna take it and just sort of like letting it slide over the surface right let's do the same sort of thing and jittering it a bit going over some of this area let's take a look at the original here So it's just sort of allowing for the this kind of unexpected little bit of chance stuff happening here. So I'm going to go back afterwards and add more white into some of these areas. But what I, I don't want to go, that's why I kind of played it a little bit safer here before I raced right in, because I want to have a little bit more nuance 
in this mountain here. Gail says, um, is the next session going to be oil paints? <laughs> well, the the next series of uh, videos I make will, will I use, teach people how to use oil paints. That would be a great idea. Um, the, um, I would like to do an oil painting class eventually. I, I do... What I want to do in uh, kind of late January, however, is, well, let, hmm, I'm still putting the, I'm, I'm going to, what I'm going to be doing a lot more, I'm going to be showing people how to do similar painting, like basically what we've been doing so far, but not sort of consecutive, you know, 35, 36, or 7, 38 classes, so they're a little more of a potluck style. But I'm also then going to show people how to adapt an artist's technique to paint something else original. So if we were to make a Bob Ross painting on a Tuesday, on Thursday, we're going to take a different image and we're going to create a Bob Ross painting from scratch, from an image that we find on the internet or in the newspaper, etc. So it'll be kind of a similar approach, but showing you how you can apply the things that we've been learning to creating your own artwork. So let's now put some of the shadows in here. So I'm going to use this cool blue, right? And I'm going to put this cool blue into this shadow, into this gray here. And let's do the same sort of thing. I'm going to have to turn my canvas around a little bit to get at it. Actually, that's very hard to kind of see what, what I'm up to. So. Okay, so th this is all working. I'm, I'm quite happy with this. Right now, we're still, I'm gonna do two more layers. I'm gonna do another even darker blue, and then I'm gonna come over and do the highlights with like a white over top and even work a little bit on that sun. Okay, so let's just take some of this blue, the cool blue. This time I'm gonna take a little bit of black. I don't often use black, but Bob Ross did so. Take this dark blue. And you know what? I'm just going to go to a regular brush. Trying to use these big brushes for some of the details is just sort of. It works. You know, it's kind of nice on camera, but now I'm just going to take a smaller brush. And often the darkest area is right next to the highlight. All right, so kind of where the, these, the light and dark are meeting 
is often where you have the darkest shadow. Okay. And then last but not least, we'll put in some highlights. So for my highlights, I'm going to take white, and I'm even going to put a little, oops, yeah, I got a little bit of black in there. Let's see, I'm going to use a larger brush anyway. So take some white. going to mix a little bit of the yellow that's in the sky into that white. So now what I'm going to do is I want to try to recreate a little bit of this down here, but using warmer colors. And now that we know how we can do this effectively, we probably it should be a little bit less. Uh, won't have to take the same kind of detour that we did. So, um, the first thing we could think about is adding a little bit of warmth here. I guess this is kind of covered by the rocks, but I'm gonna put that in anyway. So if we imagine um, the sun would, would be somewhere uh, closer to right, maybe around here. Here's where I'm gonna put this. So this is my red paint, and let's just I, again. I'm taking a little bit of a detour from Bob Ross's here, right? I, this might even get covered a lot of it by my trees, but. You know, I want there to, it to be somewhere there, right? Whether it's all kind of obliterated or not. Okay, I'm gonna take my brush, a dry brush, and just kind of blend some of this out a bit. And just as he likes to do, take this. Uh, 
Okay. Now I'm going to take the uh, warm blue and I'm going to dilute it here. Let's just put this down here. take a, a dry brush and just sort of take it and try to blend some of this in. I'm just going to blast it with some hair. Okay, and then I'm just going to go back over everything with some warm yellow. Kind of uh, unify it again. It's going to dilute a little bit of the intensity of... Oops, this brush. Not quite clean enough. warm yellow. Okay, I'm just going to take this and pretty much go almost over everything here. Taking this yellow, blending it back out over top of everything again, just like we did with the sky.
so I would say we're about three quarters of the way there. All of this other, the trees and everything are gonna come by pretty quickly. I think it's, you know, it's just like building a house, you know, 80% of it is like the foundation. You just gotta get that, the, you know, if you've ever watched a building being built and you know, it seems like, you know, you drive by every day for a few weeks and there just seems like a big pit and no action happening. And then you come back on, you know, you, you go a different way or you take a week off, you go, you know, all of a sudden you come back, there's like a big building, <laughs> like, whoa, that came up fast, right? It's because it's all the foundation getting this, the, the structure in place. And then it's like all the little finishing the faucets and all that stuff goes by much faster. Okay. So, let's see, let's go dry that. like the opposite in, in some way of how he painted he's doing wet on wet we're sort of doing dry on or wet on dry right which is also how you would paint with oil paints is besides doing a la prima wet on dry is the most traditional way of painting and that's why it could take an artist a year to make one painting is it they're probably making 10, 15 other paintings at the exact same time while one is sitting there drawing for a few months, they're working on another one and they're just swapping them in and out, right? Okay, so now let's start putting in some trees here, which is, I think, the kind of starts getting exciting because so far we've had this here. I've just got all those. Actually, you know what? We need to put this water or these trees here and then the reflection there that's that we'll do that and then we'll put these big trees on top so which brush do i want to use okay i'm going to use this brush here and let's get some of these Start, we're going to start using some warmer blue in here. So we'll get this warm blue. Oops. And let's steal some of the white from here. And a little bit of black, because we're going to turn this into a bit of a gray tone, right? Because it's still a little bit further away. We don't want it to be too bright. And then I'm going to take this, put this on this far shore here. And what he does here is he's, he starts actually blending that paint down. Now with acrylic paint, we, it's a little bit harder to do that. I'm gonna add a little bit more white into this mixture. And we're just gonna kind of do a little bit of a drag down here. And 
other thing that he will do is take a dry brush and just kind of going horizontally over it to kind of smudge it out a little bit. See, it doesn't work as well with with acrylics here. If I had maybe more paint on my brush, that could could have helped. But uh, in fact, what if we get a little bit of water on this brush and just. Yeah, it just kind of scrubs it all away, doesn't Hmm. Why not if that's wet? Hmm. I'm going to go back into here, just adding a little bit slightly darker, adding a little bit more black into that gray. I'm just going to try doing that reflection on the water again. Adding it, maybe let's do it right here. See if I can soften this up a bit. The dry brush. Okay. It's going to get a little bit uh, more just blue on there. And just continue this a bit. It's a little intense, but. Okay, and then next I'm going to start putting in these trees. So, um, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna work our way from a darker blue to a, a a lighter warm blue. So we'll take this warm blue that we had on our paintbrush here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of the warm yellow to make the green just a little bit dark and it's gonna take a bit of the cool blue in here okay so w one of the things Bob Ross does is he's using fan brush and what he would do is get load this up with paint and then he kind of makes these 
a couple of vertical lines and then using kind of the side of it at the top and then as we go down starting to kind of use down here now I'm not going to use that same sort of brush also because this fan brush is pretty big for the size of canvas I have um, so I'm going to use just uh, my regular brush and let's just kind of go right Get a little bit more paint on here. And you can make your trees as big or small as you like. So then going down and patting so I'm not I'm not getting the exact same kind of results as he has I'm using a different brush but you know it's similar and the goal right now is not to fill in everything right we don't want a big solid mass of tree we're gonna put several other layers of other colors um, over top of this. So we want some of that to kind of be shining through a bit. Okay. And we're going to have other things going on down there, so that's good. Let's just do this again. This is kind of a bit of a muddy blue. It's or green, really. Um, And then you decide like how many trees do we want in here maybe we'll put we'll put one more he's got we look at this Let's see I mean I already changed here <laughs> um, but he's got another one right here right Maybe I'm gonna come back up here. I'm gonna scrub a little bit of that of this off and come back up a little higher. Just like that, right? Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of brown. I'm going to mix up brown and have that kind of as the inside of the tree. 
So I can basically take this same color I just mixed, the blue, the warm blue with the warm yellow, and let's just add some warm red right into here. Right, it's too orangey. It just means we need a little bit of blue. Right, there's a nice little brown. Okay. So let's just see how this looks here. brush. I'm not going all the way down. Kind of a little skipping a little bit there because parts of the tree will be hidden or the, or the trunk of the tree are kind of hidden by the density of the I like the idea. He's he's got like a couple of trees that are a little bit uh, on an angle. I like that. So I'm gonna add a f another couple of trees in here too. Now that I okay. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit more paint to make. Brown back on here. So the painting is starting to kind of come together. I know it probably seemed like we were going off the cliff for a bit, but. the painting process. I think I've mentioned a few times that making a painting is like riding a roller coaster, right? If things are going really, really well, that's when you want to get worried. You're like, oh, okay. Any minute now I'm going to drop my paintbrush into the middle of the face that I've painted or, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to accidentally do something on there and have a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. So if you're... And, and so I think if you go into it knowing that there could be some little bit of a problem, when it actually happens, it's like, oh, okay, okay, there it is. Let's, let's figure out how we can solve that. Rather than like, oh, no, this never happens to anybody, but always me. I'm always the one, right? If you just keep on, okay, this is, everything's going to be okay. This happens to everybody. How can we make this work? So now I'm just going to continue working on these trees and I want to, I want a square brush like this, kind of the smaller the better, this is the smallest one I have with this set, so we'll use it. Um, and I'm just going to add more green on here, but I'm going to brighten it up a little bit or add a little bit of white into it. And we can even use a little bit of the of the cool yellow and the cool blue, which give us this similar kind of pop color.
color that's in the background. There's a bit of white in there. Okay, we don't want to overdo it, but... If you're... If the if your canvas is still really wet, then you're gonna have to dip your paintbrush in in back into the paint more frequently, just because it's gonna be picking up the paint that was on the canvas there originally. And so you can do this nice and carefully. When you watch Bob Ross do this, he's kind of like racing ahead as he do, does it, and um, he's doing that because at this point he's got like five minutes left usually when he's painting these trees so he's really racing ahead and and f for all the criticism that he might get he is you know he he knows what he's doing and he can do it fast and that can be really exciting to watch but it's also if you're trying to recreate these paintings especially if you're on the newer end of things it can be really frustrating you're like how do, how does he do it so quickly and so well and you know so it's just as a reminder you know it's like doing exactly what he's doing as quickly as he does it it's unlikely that most of us can do it like that he has a little bit more practice with his technique than we do Okay, let's just keep on powering ahead here. <laughs> now my sky is like a kind of a bizarre color, but um, it doesn't bother me too much. It's that, that bright green on there. It was blue, but when I put my uh, that yellow wash over top of it, it literally kind of washed that blue out. If I wanted, I could do a blue wash on part of that and bring it back out. Okay. I'm now, I've got like this kind of middle value. I've got a bit of a highlight. Now I'm actually going to darken, I'm going to go back over it and darken it. So I'm going to mix a, another um, uh, green, but this one's going to have a little bit of black in it. It's just going to be a bit of a darker shade here right so I got my warm yellow and my warm blue together here this just add a bit of black right in here even more black. I don't typically add too much black, but so then I got that, and let's just flatten that brush, try to get it as flat as possible. Towards the bottom of the tree, it's going to get darker and darker because there's more 
density of, of foliage, right? So, whereas up higher, we're going to expect to see more things through those trees. Okay, we are, I think, going to brighten up. We're going to put some snow on these, on the trees in a second here. I think, um, I feel like this tree needs to come up a bit higher, potentially. Or maybe not. Mm, yeah, I think it will. trunk back in there a bit. Okay. So you know what color that he's using that we don't? Is that icy blue? I think I want to have a bit, have a bit of that. Icy teal. So I think that's the next color that I'm going to mix in a second here. Because what I want to do is start building up the bottom here. So I'm going to, I've got this really nice dark color. So I'm just going to keep that on my brush. And let's build out some of this uh, foreground stuff here. Okay, <laughs> so um, what am I gonna do? Yeah, let's try this.
Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to get some of this warm blue into the foreground. Because we've got this very bright area up here. Right now it's pretty heavy and dark. So we're going to brighten this up a lot. One of the things that I want to do is I'm going to take this warm blue. So I know I've it says cool red, but I'm just my palette's getting pretty dirty here. So we got warm blue. And let me see. How should we do this? Let's uh I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. Do I have any white left on here? There's a bit of white. Okay. And I want to put a little bit of this in here in the water. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my a dry brush and just sort of blend it out a little bit just soften it up Blending it out a bit, integrating it into the water. And now I'm just going to take some of this blue just right out of the tube. And I'm just going to start putting it into some of these dark areas here. So I'm just using this big brush and just kind of stamping all over the place, particularly in some of these shadowy areas. So can you, f I don't know how it's showing up on the camera, but where I am, adding this blue is just all of a sudden, <laughs> this is just leaping forward towards me, which is what we want, right? We want this warm blue up front So much so that I think I'm going to go back in and add a bit of this same blue into the trees because I really like how it looks. Oh yeah, that's what it needed. Not a lot, just little hints of it.
So I think at this stage we're we're about ninety five percent done here. The next little bit is we're gonna put a little frosting on the trees and down here. Well, you know, if you want, you could keep it a kind of a summer. Right now, this is a bit of a summery scene. His is obviously kind of a bit more of a wintry scene, which was kind of what attracted me to the picture a little bit. But I could, I would be, I could be convinced that this is done in like a few seconds here. Uh, so it's up to you as to like what season this painting is taking place in. just these little dabs of blue it's almost imperceptible but it really does pull these trees and the ground uh, forward here I also really like what's happening with this light coming through there nice warmth in the water that's cool okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn my scene into a bit more of a of a cooler scene and, and add some snow onto the trees. But as I said, I could totally see you keeping the painting as it is right now. I mean I I already sort of tipped my hand by adding a little bit of this cool uh, or the, the tinted blue into the water. That kind of already is a bit of a clue to us that um, that there's going to be white on here. But if you didn't, if you want to keep it warmer, I would probably add a little bit. I could even, you could take this uh, warm yellow and just do a, a wash over top of that. And that would turn this a little bit more greenish and integrate it a little bit better into here but uh, that's what I would do if I wanted it to be a little and who knows maybe after I put the, the white in there I may want to do that but we won't know until we got it in there so let's now take we're gonna use we're gonna do some warm blue and we're going to do with some white. And then we're also going to do a little bit of cool blue with some white. Because the cool blue is cold. And we expect the snow to have a bit of a cold kind of quality, right? So um, let's... In fact, it's not just going to be blue. It's going to We're going to do this green again. So we've got this green. We're going to be a little bit more on the blue side. So right now, it's kind of a bit of a racing green color. Do you see that? Nice racing green. And... Do we have this all the white I have on here? Let's just add a little bit of white. I just need more white. I'm always, especially towards the end of the painting, trying to use up any extra paint that I've got scattered around the canvas so that as little as possible is wasted. So we're not going to do too much. You can see Bob Ross when he does this, he's he's a lot more fearless. Part of it is because he's on that time constraint. And so he's using, he just goes like full on white into the highlights. I kind of are going to play it a little bit safer because I want to maybe have a few mid-tones in there. So I have like some areas that are, because I'm going to add in a little bit more white here in a minute. Okay. So this also helps kind of create a little bit of separation from that big green sky <laughs> in the background, <laughs> which is a bit of an odd thing, I think. It's an odd choice, but uh, 
play the hand you're dealt, or <laughs> the hand that you've dealt for yourself. In my case. Put a bit of this into the reflections. So now let's uh, up the ante a bit here. I'm going to go more on more white. And I have to be, I have to have some restraint as I'm doing this too, because we're not going to, we don't want to have like tons and tons and tons of white. We just want little highlights. Start going into these bushes here and kind of going almost like trying to paint this type of a shape. All right, so kind of I'm going to go um, much more blue here, blue and white. to flatten that brush as I was painting it things are just getting too blobby so I just want to make sure I'm on the using the edges Thank you. 
and wherever you're putting in the water, just softening those edges out just a bit. Okay. So I'm going to take this cool blue and white, and you see this kind of nice, just beautiful color. So we'll put some of this on these trees. This, of course, is a totally different way of painting than, than I typically paint, if it's not already a little bit obvious. This is not sort of my preferred way of painting. I don't usually do use the brushes in this particular way or do a lot of blending. Um, it doesn't it feel particularly natural to me. Um, I find it's a little bit, let's see, I think I, I was a little bit heavy handed. I'm going to have to go darken that in a little bit. Okay, so as I said, I'm just going to go back in here, darken that up or down a bit. Just some of the warm blue back in underneath here a bit. You know, as I'm working on this, it makes me think, like, his style works really well for fast painting. Absolutely. But as I try to kind of use the same sort of style for working more slowly, I'm sort of getting myself into a little bit of trouble. So, that's something I would think about in the future. I think if I did try to paint this very quickly, I'd have a lot more success than the kind of a little bit slower way that I'm, I've been approaching it. I'm even going to go a little bit darker here. I'm going to add a bit of the cool blue and some black onto my brush so that I can go in here and just there we go those are just getting too much Okay. 
Okay, so then the lastly, I'm gonna add some white and I think we'll be almost done here. I think we're just about done. So let's just clean these brushes. You know, this is a great learning experience for me. I've never painted really in in this style. Uh, Bob Ross's whole technique, this Alaprima, was a technique that was used a lot um, by um, like painters in the 15th, um, no, 17th century. So like mid 1600s, like Franz Halls and Caravaggio to a certain extent. Like it's a and we're used a lot for like portraiture and getting a, a likeness down really really quickly because you'd be making a number of these as, as fast as possible. Um, but it is not something that is really taught in schools anymore. I think uh, I would even suggest that's partly because of Bob Ross. I think there's a bit of a stigma in art education, maybe against teaching people to paint like Bob Ross because I think it, certain people have been raised to think of it as just like, you know, um, thrift store paintings. Uh, but he was using a legitimate painting technique. He was just using it, sort of almost like weaponizing it to make paintings as quickly as humanly possible. Okay, so I'm just going to add... A little bit of white in here to, for this far shore. You can see those little lines certainly help, hey? How to to create a little definition there. You may have to go over them a few times if they're if they kind of fade a little bit as they dry, which is typical. Now, he's got all this, these bushes down here with lots of white on the tips. So, I'm just doing sort of little... Little kind of highlights on top of things.
let's try to build that up. I didn't like how flat some of this is here. Same thing. So I'm trying to create these little bundles of of, uh, of I don't know what some sort of plant here. So these all of the like little tiny packets. All right, so that they all because that's also I think one of the techniques he's using is to layer some shapes over top of other shapes. from the middle ground towards the very f front of the picture, the foreground. Always remember that as white dries, it goes a little bit more transparent. It loses some of its intensity. You know, so you might want to um, think about adding. You know, once it dries, you might want to add a little bit more over and over again. We put a little bit. On some of these trees. You know, when painting trees, it's all about the the randomness that makes it work. You know, you, you want to try to have a variety of of you know the, of uh, if, like if we're putting the snow here, it's not all going to land on the tree and on every branch the same way. Otherwise, we're going to have like a cartoony landscape. So. Um, and I think maybe right before I finish, I'm going to add just a little bit of, oh, I want to add some white back. Oh, that's, it's got a lot of blue in that white. So I'm going to add some white back into the, up into the sky there. And even add just a tad bit of white onto some of these high, or yellow into these highlights.
go. So I'm just taking some of my cool um, yellow and white. And I'm just going to use this to do a few little spots on here. This is not what Bob Ross did, but I feel like if there was this big yellowy green sky, we would expect to see some of that reflecting in the on these trees and sure how I feel about all that, but <laughs> I have to, I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to do too much. I think it's a little bit spots, the dots, which I think will make it most effective. This is a weird paint. I, I was expecting when I chose it Oh, we'll do something kind of weird and strange. I did not expect the p painting to go in this direction. Oh, I forgot clouds. Well, this is supposed to be a clear day, right? Hmm. I'm just going to put some of these dots on this side because this is where the light is hitting. I see people signing off because they got to go to their Christmas or New Year's celebrations or Zoom calls. or So we'll be done here in just a few minutes. If you um, have found this at all helpful, or you learned exactly what not to do, <laughs> which I think happens in some of these cases for sure. At least I'm learning a lot. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to see the artwork you create as in response to Bob Ross today. So you can send those to me via um, the Facebook group if you want to join that the link is right in the description or you can send them to me via Twitter Instagram um, or email if you want my email to send me a Facebook message and that's also a way if you want to make a e-transfer or send a check or money order um, you can send me a message through Facebook and I'll send it to you that way Otherwise, I just get spammed like nuts from uh, any time I post any personal information up here on the YouTube. Okay, that is a weird, weird painting. Um, I think I'm going to stop here. I feel like I could continue working on this for a while. Um, if, yeah, I mean, this, I find this green up here really weird, but again, I was thinking it was going to be a weird painting. Um, yeah, this one was a challenge. You know, it's funny, Bob Ross's technique, I think, is deceptively difficult, and he makes it look really, really, really easy, which is why he's so attractive as as like a teacher and as an artist is it's like my kid could do that you know when we're using acrylic paint we have to use a slightly different uh process in order to get similar results obviously we weren't using 
um, a retarder to slow the paint from drying. We weren't using a palette knife, which is one of his favorite tools. And we didn't use a fan or butterfly brush at all, right? And we weren't using oil paints. So we, we were using like basically none of the materials he was using to make our painting. So it's not surprising that we're gonna get very different results. Um, I, you know, I just as I'm kind of wrapping up, I think I do have a, a lot more respect for how he painted than I did even just a couple of hours ago before I started. I think one of the things I've had in my own mind uh, a kind of bias against his way of painting is that I saw particularly the use of the fan brush and the um, whatever this thing is called uh, the why did it just escape me um, okay um, the why I can't remember on earth what I just See, this is, I think I need to get to sign off because I'm going to probably getting hungry and losing my mind. Um, but b b all of these tools that Bob Ross used to make his paintings really quick, I think I was, I've always been kind of turned off because it always felt to me like a trick, like an optical illusion that he was doing purposely to save time. And it achieved an effect that worked, but when you got up reasonably close to it, it started to fall apart and just looked kind of um, like like uh, over like it, it I, I felt like there was some kind of it was slightly dishonest to be quite frank um, that that there was a number all this trickery going on to make a painting that worked or that was convincing and then it was only just barely convincing like it wasn't um uh you know that that almost like a the set to a movie right if you've ever been on a movie set when you see it on television it looks great but when you get like anywhere near some of the props or the backgrounds as they're painted everything looks looks very obviously fake Right? And so I always, I guess I always thought looking at Bob Ross's painting technique and the results that it wasn't very convincing that it was done to use those techniques purely so that he could paint very, very fast. And something about that always rubbed me the wrong way. I wouldn't say it was like cheating, just that I, maybe I just have this weird hang up, but it, like almost like a moral quandary of like is that okay to do can you use these tools to make the painting um as quickly as possible and i think even just the act of painting this again and, and trying to do it myself obviously not using the same tools i'm i'm more my mind is is open a lot more than it used to be and just recognizing, like, you know, it's like how, how, like, painting is an abstraction to begin with, right? To make mountains look like mountains, you are being dishonest, whatever you do, unless you go and chisel some glue rocks right on here. There is an, a level of illusion to any type of painting whatsoever, especially if you're trying to re-present something, represent something. And so his technique is no more dishonest or honest than Lauren Harris or you know, Frida Kahlo or any of the other artists that we've looked at in the past. Um, so I, I, yeah, I guess I'm just, I, I've, doing this is that's and that's the power of exploring another artist's technique is by sort of immersing yourself temporarily in an inside another person's world you can't help but develop more respect for what they do 
right? You may not like it. You may not come away saying, well, I, this is the technique I'm going to use from now on and this is how I'm going to work. But at least for me, all, cause all, all I can do is speak for myself, is I have a much greater understanding of the, uh, the pros and the cons, the difficulties of using this technique, and also for him as an artist. Because clearly he mastered his technique. Like, there's no doubt about it. If, I think even the most cynical person would have to admit that he was better at his type of painting, that very fast speed painting a la prima technique than virtually anybody alive, to be quite honest, uh, because of how the accuracy that he was able to pull off in such a short amount of time. Um, will I use this same technique again? Probably not. You know, the w painting trees this way for me is not, um, like I virtually, this is totally, completely 180 different way than I would have painted. It, maybe another, I could do this episode again trying to paint it more like how I would paint it. And I think that's what I'm gonna be doing uh, after these 40 sessions are over, is like, how would I actually paint this if I was going to paint it from complete scratch without trying to use any of his style, the blending, you know, we would arrive at a very different painting. But I think I wouldn't necessarily, I, I feel much better having tried his technique and trying to understand him a little bit better than just dismissing him altogether and just imposing my own uh, technique or will upon his composition. So anyway, um, long story short, this has been a big eye opener for me, working with uh, way more than I thought it would. I thought I was, personally, I thought I was going to have a little bit more fun working on this painting than I did. I found that like, this was a, a lot more difficult using the technique that I used than it probably should have. I think I maybe overcomplicated things for myself and for you guys as well. So um, anyway, I, I just uh, wanted to kind of end with a little bit of a, a quick reflection on this process since it is so different than anything I've, I've done before. Okay, everybody, I see lots of comments there. People are wishing Happy New Year's. So um, hopefully you were able to get this painting done by the end of the year. And we're going to start off 2021 in just a few days from now. We're going to be painting a Claude Monet painting. Uh, it's called Impression Sunrise. Probably one of the five most influential paintings in all of art history. Maybe you're not aware of it. Maybe you haven't seen it before. But you know of Claude Monet and you've most certainly heard of impressionism well claude monet that painting impression sunrise was sort of the ground zero for what the, the art movement impressionism that grew kind of out of it it wasn't the first impressionist painting there were other people who were using similar techniques and styles before him and even him he was obviously using that same sort of technique you know years before that painting but that painting is considered you know, the ground, as I said, ground zero, the X on the map for where Impressionism began. And Impressionism was like a bomb that went off and just oof, had ripples effect. You know, without that painting or Impressionism having begun, we wouldn't have things like Andy Warhol. We wouldn't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, Banksy doing murals or any of that, all those other artists that we've talked about you know, since in this, that are either alive today or in the previous century. So um, we're, we are going to do something very different than that, than, than this Bob Ross painting in just a few days. So I'm going to wish all of you guys a wonderful remaining few hours of 2020. We will see you guys next year. I always love saying that. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys in uh, in just a few days but it will actually be a year or it, it, i always a year from now um 
So please send me the work that you've made. I can't wait to see it. I'm sure we've got many, many different paintings than the ones that I created here. And maybe you've got very, very different colors. And it could be a very colorful um, episode when we look at all of your artwork together combined. Okay, everybody. So enjoy the rest of your evening of 2020. Let's all hope next year is much, much better. Stay safe, and we will see you next year. Bye-bye, everybody.